This conversation begins with the question, should Christians count? Yes. Should Christians, born-again believers in Jesus Christ, should we be counting? Now, I know that's a strange question for most of us. I, I really do. I understand that. But just stay with me for a moment. You've heard certain phrases like, uh, don't count me out. You've heard that phrase before. And you've heard phrases like, hey, count me in. <laughs> I'm in it to win it. Count me in. Well, this is not that strange then. Should Christians count? See, what I'm trying to get you to understand is it's okay to count. But, but do you know what you're counting on? That's what I want you to understand. Do you know what you're counting on when you're counting? You see, we all count. As a matter of fact, we love counting. Everything we do is a part of counting, adding up, subtracting, multiplying, division. Whatever we're doing, it's about counting. It all leads to counting in some shape, form, or fashion. Uh, most of us are what I call addicted to counting. We just are. We love numbers. We, we love holding things up. So, so we're, we're addicted to it. I mean, <laughs> we love it. We're all engaged into it. See, some of you are, are counting right now how many minutes this video is going to last. So you're already counting on me. The clock is ticking. So let me get a move on. And then some of you, uh, you're going somewhere today and you're, you, you got your phone out and you're looking at your GPS system to see exactly uh, how long it's going to take you to get from point A to point B from your origin to your destination. And so you're adding up all those minutes to see how long it's going to take. I told you we love counting. We love counting. Nothing wrong with it. Just understand what you're counting on. There was a friend of mine who told me this story about a young lady who was invited to England to see the queen. And so her friends were just ecstatic. They were elated. They were just, oh my gosh, girl, you got to ask her this and you've got to watch this and you've got to look at this and you've got to observe this. They gave her a laundry list of things that they wanted her to kind of observe while she was there in England to bring back to them, to give them an account of what she's seen. They wanted to live through her eyes, through her, her voice, if you will, of what she's seen, because they maybe would never go to England and see the queen. So this young lady, when she's in England, and she's in this crowd of people who's invited to this event, and the queen steps in. And the young lady noticed when the queen sits down, she noticed that there's a mouse up under the queen's seat. And so, and so the queen is sitting there and she's talking, and the young lady, she's so distracted by the mouse up under the queen's seat, she's not hearing anything, she's not watching the queen, <laughs> she's not observing the queen. You see, she didn't give the queen no mind because she was so distracted by the mouse up under the queen's chair. Now, that might not be you, but for most of you, it is. You see, you're, you're there and you're counting on the small things, you're not counting on the major thing. Uh, let me say it like this, you're focused on the minor and you're not focused on the major. So when she got back to the States, her friends, they gathered around her and they asked her, so, so what did you see? What did you observe? Uh, how did she look? How did she smell? How did she feel? What did she say? And all the lady could say was, you know what? I really can't tell you because I got so distracted by the mouse up under the queen chair. The moral of the story is be careful counting on your friends because your friends sometimes can't give an account or a recount of what they've seen. And so therefore, you have to count on yourself to get yourself over to England to see the queen yourself. You see, you can't take everybody's word for what they're seeing. See, I told you we love counting. Well, be careful counting on people who you can't count on. You can't just count on anybody. Have you ever noticed that uh, when you're in the bedroom and you're thinking of something you have to go to the kitchen for, and when you get to the kitchen, you realize that you don't remember what you came in the kitchen for? <laughs> so you, you, you stood there and start yourself and start the kitchen and you realize you start backtracking back to the bedroom because you think if you backtrack, you can remember uh, once you get back in that same spot in the bedroom what you were supposed to go in the kitchen for. And sometimes you will and sometimes you won't. Let me tell you what you're doing. You're overworking your memory. You're overworking your brain. That's what you're doing. You've got so much inside of your head that you're counting. You're counting up and you're counting on and you're, you're, you're making decisions inside of your head. And, and guess what? You've got your cell phone in your hand. Uh huh. You've got your iPad in your other hand. And you've got your TV on in your, in your bedroom. And then when you walk across your living room, your TV's on your living room. And so you're so distracted. You're just like the young lady who went to England. You're so distracted about other things, that, the real things that are really important to you. You can't count on yourself. Watch this. Because you've counted yourself out. You've given your time to so much other stuff that when you do get to the kitchen, don't get me wrong, you can't figure it out. And so you have to backtrack. You start messing with your mind. Am I, am I losing my mind? Well, well, put some of that stuff down and maybe you can find your mind. You see, who are you counting on? I told you it's important to know one thing about counting is what are you counting on? Are you counting on yourself to really 
decipher all of that stuff that you're getting yourself into? Be careful counting, because sometimes if you start counting, you start counting on the stuff that you're counting. And if you start counting on the stuff that you're counting, you discount the God who gave you all the stuff. Now, if you start discounting the God who gave you all the stuff, you disconnect from the God who gave you all the stuff that you're counting. Be very careful counting. You don't want to ever discount God. You don't want to ever disconnect from God. But we get so busy counting, we start counting on others and counting on ourselves as if we did something. Well, we didn't. So, so let me segue to the story about Gideon so I can show you what I'm talking about when I talk about counting on yourself and not counting on God. In the book of Judges, chapter 7, verses 1 through 7, it reads like this, verse 1. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them, by the hill of Moray in the valley. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. He said, you got too many people. I told you, stop counting so many people. Uh, Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand hath saved me. You see what I'm saying? You start counting on yourself, and you think you've saved yourself. Verse 3. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And their return of the people, 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. That means there was 32,000 people. 22,000 left, 10,000 stayed. Verse 4. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. He says, you got too many still. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, and the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. Watch this, verse 5. So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. Verse 6. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. 300 men. So that means there's 9,700 that didn't. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. That means they got business suit on. They, they got a briefcase. They're like businessmen. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped will I save you. By 300, not 32,000. And deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go, every man, unto his place. The Lord told Gideon, I'm going to take your lack. I'm not going to take your abundance. I'm not taking the 32,000. I want the 300. Yeah, let the 9,700 go home too. He says, I want all them to go shelter in. I'm going to take what you have remaining. Isn't it something? See, when you let God do the counting for you, when you count on God, then God will show up and show out. So Gideon let God do all the counting, let God do the separation. The Lord told Gideon, you've got too many men, 32,000? I don't think so. Yes, get rid of those 32,000. He told them, for those men who are afraid and those men who have some fear, you don't need them. Those are the ones who are going to do what I call friendly fire. They're going to shoot you <laughs> because they're already fearful. You don't want them. And then the rest of them, he said, they're like businessmen. They, they want to ride on horses and in chariots. They don't want to get their, their clothes dirty. They, they're going to stoop down and, and drink water. He says, no, no, no. What you want is you want men who will, who will kneel down on one knee and, and open and close one eye as they're drinking water so they can see the enemy coming. He said, you want men who will stoop low behind enemy lines. You want men who will give their life for you. Yeah. He said, you found 300 men who will, who will go and crawl in the mud. And watch this. They might not even have a sword, but they'll pick up a stick and stab somebody with it. He said, you want men like that. Yeah, you want men who will bite someone. You want men who will, who will fight just to be fighting because guess what? That's what's in them. You don't want someone who, who has a business suit on trying to carry a suitcase into battle. No, you want someone who has the right attire. You want someone who will, who will give their life for you. Yes. He says, all I need, this is what God told him, all you need, Gideon, is a few good men. Do you know of a few good men? Well, well, that's what God is counting on. God is counting on a few good men. 
And that's what Gideon was counting on. And you saw the story is that Gideon defeated the Midianites with 300 men. Do you realize how powerful that is? Do you realize that Gideon counted on God? Therefore, he didn't discount God, so he wasn't disconnected from God. He was connected to God, and God gave him the victory. Do you realize that there are 8 billion people living on the face of the earth? 8 billion. 8 billion, and we're all diverse. 8 billion, all of us. One morning, guess what? We all woke up and we were on one accord. I mean, for the first time in our lifetime, we all woke up one morning and we all had the same common, if you will, commonality. And guess what it was? It was the fear of the unknown. We were facing an enemy. I call him an invisible, airborne enemy called COVID-19. All of us. Yeah, we were introduced to him. <laughs> COVID-19. So we all woke up one morning on the same page. I mean, and ever since then, I told you we're counting. And ever since then, guess what? We've been fixated on watching every piece of news we can find, social media, you name it. The wide, World Wide Web, you name it. We're looking at the news 24-7. And, and they're telling us how the numbers are going up, and then the numbers are going down, then the numbers are going up, then the numbers are going down. It's like a roller coaster. We just can't get off of it. We're, and we're, hold up, I told you we're addicted. We're addicted to counting, and so we're addicted to those numbers. I mean, you know when our sports heroes are impacted and infected? Oh, we know we got some problems. These guys are built like tanks, and they're coming down with the COVID-19. I mean, we, we know we got some problems. And then we knew we really had a problem when they start closing all the sporting events. Oh, my gosh. We knew something was wrong because let's be for real. We know we love our sports. And when they start saying zero attendance, oh, my gosh, at sporting events, whew, because of this word called social distance. Isn't that something? Never heard the word before. Social distancing. I mean, it became a household name. It's almost like a family member. We got so used to that word, social distancing. And then transportation just closed down all over the world. You couldn't fly. You couldn't, you couldn't go anywhere. I mean, we have been hit hard, but, but we're still counting. We all have a, what I call it, a very unique way, though, of doing math. <laughs> I mean, your math ain't the same as my math. I mean, math is math, but, but we all have this word way of doing math to where it adds up and benefits us. And so, and so some will add, some will subtract, some will divide, uh, some will compare, <laughs> but we all have a different way of doing it. I mean, some people use algebra, let's be for real. Some will use calculus and some will use trigonometry and some will use geometry. I'm not using any of that stuff. I just want some basic math. I want your yay to be yay and your nay to be nay. That's what God tells us. Uh, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Can somebody just do that for me? But basic math is just simply adding up, watch this, subtracting down, dividing, multiplying and comparing. That's what basic math is. I'm going to throw a few what I call uh, basic terms I've, I've made up myself. So just, just follow me here. Uh, I call it basic counting, uh, selective counting, and uh, omissive counting. Okay? Basic, yes, selective, and omissive. And, and so basic is just simply something uh, that is essential, such as flour uh, that you need for a, a recipe for a cake. That's, just, that's basic, okay? So selective counting is, is tending to choose carefully while affecting some things and not others. That's selective. Omissive counting is someone or something that has been left out or excluded. Yes, excluded. I told you we love counting, so I'm going to give you a little, a little equation here. Watch this. Um, my wife, when she goes shopping <laughs> and she comes home, and I say, hey, what, what you been up to? She'll say something like, oh, I just met the mall shopping with my girlfriends. And, and I was like, cool, cool. That's good. That's good. Now, I asked her a basic question, so she gave me a basic answer, okay? Basic, just very basic. She, she said, I've just been shopping with my girlfriends. Now, she was selective in not telling me what she purchased. <laughs> and she was omissive in not telling me that it's in the back of the trunk. That's what she, those 10 dresses that she purchased, yeah, she's waiting till I go to sleep or till I leave the house. But, but she was basic in saying, hey, I answered your question. But she was selective in not telling me what she purchased. And then she definitely was omissive in leaving them in the trunk until I went to sleep or left the house. See, see, that's the way we count. Yeah, we use basic math, if you will. We use selective math. And we use what I call omissive math. We omit some things we don't want you to know. That's what we do. And that's what's happening to us right now. See, I told you, we love counting. I tell you that, we love counting. I mean, Gideon, let's be for real. Gideon, one of those 32,000 men, he thought he needs all those 32,000 men. God said, no, 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 Gideon, you need 300. How many people do you really need in your circle of friends? I mean, come on. You need 32,000 people? Or do you need just 300? Or do you just need just two people? I mean, you've got to be careful. I mean, so I'm asking the question again, should Christians be counting? There's a primary election going on right now. 
and we're all fixated in front of our TVs and we're just looking at what the social media is telling us, what TV is telling us, what radio is telling us. And, and it's, I said it's up and down. We don't know where the vote is, but, but everybody's kind of interested and in, in, will your vote make a difference? And so you're really listening very contentiously, very contentiously, you're listening. There's one thing though that's happening also on the outskirts of all this voting. Currently, due to COVID, coronavirus, this pandemic, we're counting locally, we're counting nationally, and we're counting globally. I mean, and, and since we love counting so much, let me throw some numbers at you. Globally, we have approximately, what, 38 to 39 million people who have been infected with coronavirus and counting, still counting. Globally, we have 28 million people who have been, who are recovering, if you will, uh, who have been infected by the coronavirus and still counting, okay? And globally, we have about 1 uh, million people who have died uh, from uh, being infected, impacted by uh, the coronavirus, and, and that number is still growing as well. You see, we love counting, and we love numbers. Now, those are some numbers we don't love, but, but we love counting. And I told you we're addicted to counting. So, so, so we love counting our calories. <laughs> we love counting how much weight we lost. Uh, we just love counting. We love counting so much, some of us are counting our money, and while others are counting on the money that we need. So that's what we are. I mean, but we love counting. We love counting our blessings. Uh, we love counting our neighbors' uh, stuff. <laughs> what do they have that we don't have? Uh, we love counting the number of social media followers that we have. I mean, come on. That's what we do. We love counting how much money we're going to make at the end of the year, our bonus, our bonus check. We love counting how many members we have at our church. Preachers, guess what? If you count your members, you'll start counting on your members. And when you start counting on your members, you discount the God who gave you the countless number of members. And so, therefore, you've disconnected from the God who gave you the countless number of members because you're counting the people. Therefore, you're counting on the people. Be very careful. Yeah, so, so we love counting. My question still remains, should Christians count? Let me tell you something what's happening. The world has been infected. The world has been affected. And the world has been impacted by this coronavirus, COVID-19. All the counting and all the statistics that we receive from social media and television and radio. I mean, come on. It doesn't do justice to representing all the people who have been infected with this deadly virus, who have been affected mentally because of this virus. Now, the media and the government, come on, they're just looking at numbers. But, but, but there are people, real life people, uh, with families behind all of these numbers. We have a count of 38 million have been infected, but we don't know how much they've been affected. Uh, unless you've been infected yourself, then you can relate to them, but we, we can't relate. And then we don't know how much, how much their families have been impacted by wondering what kind of long-term health issues would their family members have. You see, it's what I call collateral damage. I mean, I might have been infected, but my whole family is affected and my whole family is impacted because of what's happened to me because of my infection. See, so that's collateral damage from, from the virus that's reaping havoc on us mentally and physically. You see, the story of this pandemic won't be told for years to come. It's going to take some time. I told you that approximately 38 million people globally have been infected with COVID-19. But the numbers are much bigger than that. They're much bigger than that. You, you see, especially when you look at how many people have been impacted. There are hundreds of millions of people who have lost their jobs due to COVID-19. I mean, that's added stress. Oh, my gosh. That's added fear. That's added doubt and anxiety. I mean, look at all that stuff that's been placed on you and your families. I mean, that, that, that has, you can't even put a, a count on that. We can't even measure that. Yeah, we can talk about the 38 million, but, but how many more millions have been impacted? You see the, the not knowing? The what if I get it or when will I get it? That's a crippling effect on your mental psyche. I mean, it just is. Uh, we're trying to remain what I call upbeat and positive and, and put on this game face and smiling. And, and while at the same time, let's be for real, uh, we're terrified on the inside because of this unknown dreaded disease. We just are. I mean, so, so what's the real damage? I mean, are we really counting the right way? Are we being selective? Are we being omissive? <laughs> are we being basic? I mean, what's really happening to us mentally and physically? I mean, how many alcoholics are being produced uh, because of this uh, pandemic? How many drug addicts are being produced because of this pandemic? How many suicides have happened because of this pandemic? How many people have had the domestic violent issues because of this uh, pandemic? I mean, just think about it. Uh, we're all being sheltered in. I mean, because of this COVID, how many homicides uh, can be attributed to this nasty grip of this evil pandemic?
How many marriages, when you think about it, I mean, how many marriages have fallen apart due to this COVID-19? I mean, how many uh, retirement plans have been completely annihilated? I mean, just completely gone. You've got to keep working because you, uh, you don't have a retirement plan anymore. I mean, how many of us have lost our jobs? I mean, how many have lost their homes? How many have lost their dignity and lost their hope and, and lost their faith? Yes. How many have lost their faith to believe? How many have lost their faith to keep living? I mean, this is impactful. How many more homeless people have been created because of this pandemic? I mean, how many people have lost their dreams, uh, their plans for living and, and placed everything on hold? And so really, what is the true cost of counting? And I think the only way to really know the true numbers is to add up all those that's been infected, all those that's been affected, and all those that have been impacted because of what I call this, of this collateral damage of this uh, dreaded uh, pandemic. And now we've made this political. We politicalize this whole virus. And so, and so we're defending COVID-19 by, by making statements like, well, guess what? Uh, more people died of the flu this past year, or, or more people died of cancer this past year, or, or more people died of homicides this past year, or more people died of abortions this past year. I mean, we're trivializing it. I mean, what's happened to us? I mean, we're trying to normalize a, a pandemic. We're trying to normalize a death rate of, of mankind. I mean, what, what hap what ha what's happening to us? I mean, we're trying to marginalize, yeah, human life. That's what we're doing. I mean, so I ask you the question, should we be counting? I mean, should Christians, should born again believers, should any of us be counting? I told you, I'm okay with counting. I, I really am. As long as you're counting on Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. Yeah. As long as you're counting on uh, Jesus who saves all. If you're counting on Jesus, I'm all in. For those who have died, may God bless their souls. But to those who are left behind, we live with the impact of what's happened. But we also live with the faith that Jesus is still in charge. I only want those friends around me who I can count on, not those friends who want to be counted in the number. I, I, no, 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 that, that's like Gideon. That's like the 32,000. I want those people who can help me in a fight and out of a fight. So be careful counting, because if you count, you'll start counting on what you're counting, and you'll discount, you'll disconnect from the God who gave you the count in the first place. Don't forget Romans 10 and 9. Count on Romans 10 and 9. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead. Yeah, confess and believe, and you too shall be safe. And don't forget, God is God.